Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to discuss the model of human behavior or the communication model. And this model was uh, put together by uh, Edward Korzybski, who lived many years ago and did this work in about the 1930s. And it is actually a very fundamental piece that holds NLP together. So it is a little bit technical, but bear with us because once you understand this model, it'll help us put all the patterns that we use in NLP together to know how we're working with people. Now, according to another scientist, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, he stated in his book Flow that we process two million bits of information a second through our five senses. Now, all information comes in through our five senses. That's our feelings, our sight, our sounds through our ears, tastes and smells. And through those five senses, we're bringing two million bits of information. And these are being processed by our mind and our conscious mind to create an internal representation. Now, we delete, distort or generalize most of that information. So as I'm talking to you now, you're concentrating just on the words of my voice and maybe the picture in front of you. But your unconscious mind is filtering out, for example, the feeling of your shoes around your feet or the air, the temperature of the air around your skin or outside distracting noises. And so according to me, hi, chick, set me high, we process about seven plus or minus two pieces of information, which equates to about 134 bits. But anyway, a small percentage of all the information that's coming in our five senses gets past our unconscious filters. So what are these filters or how do they come about? Well, they're things like filtering because of our memories, our decisions, our motor, meta programs, which we'll talk about later, beliefs, attitudes, that sort of thing. It allows us to just concentrate and focus on those things we think are important. Now of those things that we think are important, we're creating an internal representation. In other words, you're having, you've got a picture or a thought, that's a much easier way to look at it, of something that's happening at the moment. And that is only a small part of your whole reality. But it's that thought that you're putting your focus on. Now whether that thought is a happy thought or a sad thought, it creates an emotional response which is called our state. So it will put you in a particular emotional state. Curious, angry, uh, inquisitive, I don't know, whatever your thoughts are at the time. And then quite obviously, depending on our emotional state, that will release a flood of endorphins and endocrines and things like that to change our very physical makeup. It'll reduce, release adrenaline if we're feeling scared or angry, for example, and that will affect our physiology. And our physiology obviously influences our behavior, or, or is, our, in fact, our behavior. Now, why this is important is for a number of reasons. First of all, if we, there's a saying that you go towards what you focus on. So if in your life, let's say you're keenly interested in music and your total focus is on anything musical. Now, you might walk past someone uh, trying to set you up with a new business opportunity. You might walk past a girl that's being flirtatious in your direction. And then as you walk past a music store, you see a tiny little notice. Wanted, help hire, come in and learn music and become part of the music industry. And because your focus is totally on that, that little piece of paper will spring to your attention and you'll take complete note of that. So this is really the difference between how we end up being in the role that we want. Now, do you remember we were talking about empowerment? If you are focusing on the fact that you are at effect and that you're not good enough, then the things that spring out of you in life will be exactly those things. 
and it will create the state accordingly. So it's important to realize that we are in charge of the focus of our attention and what we focus on is very important because it will allow us to see those opportunities in life that will help us go forward to reach our outcomes and our goals. Now the second reason why this is important is because when we become an NLP practitioner we're going to help others and when I teach patterns they fit within all of these different categories. So in some patterns, in some things we teach you, we teach you to help people change the internal representation that they have in their mind. Now do you remember when I just asked you in a previous video to think of giggling to yourself and smiling to yourself? Well I was working at the level of state, trying to get you to change your state, or how you feel in the moment. Another way we can do it is to get people to change their physiology and this has a dramatic effect. If you get someone to stand up, breathe in deeply, fill their lungs up with air and put their eyes up and look above the horizontal, they're going to feel much more positive than if their shoulders are slumped and they're looking down and they're breathing only in the top of their lungs. And finally we can even work on the very filters themselves which is how our unconscious mind distorts and generalizes and changes and chooses the information that it gets from the environment to make the uh, internal representation in the first place. So again a bit of a technical model but extremely important if you're going to go on to do any NLP or any personal development. I hope you enjoyed it.